Okay, good day or good morning or good evening, depending on your location in the world. Very welcome to this webinar. I am Patrick Kroon, Chief of Naval Systems in Kongsberg Maritime. Kongsberg de Maritime develop products and solution meeting specific naval requirements for surface and subsurface applications. In the presentation today, will I talk about marine robotics and naval sonars. After that follows a section related to propulsion, deck machinery and motion control equipment. Before closing, shall we also look into replenishment at sea, customer support and touch upon integrated logistics support. I will start with a broader information and paint a picture about Kongsberg Maritime and its naval business. Strength of our company is the global reach. Um, our presence means we are close to any customer in the world and able to give support and maintenance in a large number of important hubs in the world. Our combined installed base is approximately 30,000 vessels. If you have questions uh, during this presentation, please use the Q&A button in the Zoom application. Uh, the questions will be stored and we will answer in the best possible way after the presentation part. Focus in this presentation is Kongsberg Maritime. The wider Kongsberg organization includes also Kongsberg Digital, KDI, and Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace, the KDA. Both businesses are active in the naval world. Defense and Aerospace as a defense system provider and Digital as a digital systems provider. Kongsberg Maritime looks after the Navy's governmental organizations, ship owners, ship designers and yards for new sales activities. For naval market, we support navies from early conceptual studies all the way to ship retirement. For naval support ships, um, sometimes referred to as light gray vessels, can Kongsberg offer a large number of products. All products based on commercial of the shelf equipment. I estimate around four to 500 different products depending on how we calculate. Products used for these ship types have large commonality with equipment in the commercial shipbuilding. Coast Guard and other governmental ships often falls under this category. And the strategy to design equipment for multiple variant of vessel drives cost efficiency and we believe that is important. For naval combatants, darker gray vessels, um, do we market a smaller number of products and technical solutions, meeting specific naval requirements related to shock and signature? This equipment has normally gone through a navalization development, transforming the equipment to what we call military off the shelf equipment. With this product category in focus, will I start to talk about marine robotics and uh, naval sonars? In the picture, you can see Hugin being launched from the stern of a Navy ship. Hugin is Kongsberg's autonomous underwater vessel. Hugin provides an important part of underwater mission due to fully configured mission modules. Hugin can be an organic part of the surface vessel or installed as a containerized opportunity on board the ship. Hugin system has been in use with navies for more than 20 years. Listed in the picture are main modules. More specific requirements is managing dialogue with customer. And uh, the real-time synthetic aperture sonar processing and target recognition gives high productivity and cost-effective solution. 
So the details of Hugin models and some basic capability data can be found online. A webinar presentation for Hugin Superior was also given springtime this year and its recording is available on Kongsberg's YouTube channel. This picture illustrates a growing trend and how different vehicles in the very near future can interact in complex mine countermeasure operation. Uh, autonomous underwater vehicles like Hugin, you can see unmanned surface vehicles, mine disposal weapons, equipment for mine sweep, everything control and command possible by Kongsberg communication equipment underwater. Sounder unmanned surface vehicle is a multi-purpose platform suitable for hydroacoustic applications. Sounder is currently used as a fish finding equipment for more sustainable fishery, but have attracted interest for Navy applications. More details about the Sounder platform is also available online. Kongsberg Maritime is one of the world's largest acoustic manufacturers. We have more than 70 years experience with acoustics in most extreme areas. Um, we deliver acoustics for positioning, mapping, fishery, underwater communication and science, both for commercial and governmental customers. In addition, we have dedicated portfolio for Coast Guard vessels naval vessels and submarines. Within naval, we deliver anti-submarine warfare, mine countermeasure, underwater detection and underwater navigation. Our speciality within anti-submarine warfare is littoral warfare, especially anti-submarine warfare on smaller platforms and var at the cost effective price. We have several hull mounted sonars, dipping sonars and variable depth sonars. Kongsberg have demonstrated anti-submarine warfare on board our Sounder USV platform. Within mine countermeasures, we have world leading sensors like uh, synthetic aperture sonar, multi-beam echo sounder and volume search sonars. These uh, sensors enable manned vessels, autonomous underwater vehicles and unmanned surface vehicles to perform mine detection in most challenging areas. For submarines, that operates in the littorals can Kongsberg offer a portfolio of navigation and detection sonars, enabling the submarines to operate in extreme shallow and to hide in the most incredible places. With that slide, we leave marine robotics and naval sonars this time. Uh, it was very short and uh, there are more information available and focus on propulsion. A one slide summary of Kongsberg propulsion for naval vessels. In the center position, a list of specific naval requirements to be addressed during design phase. To the right, a short high level reference list. And to the left, a historical summary of propulsion equipment deliveries. Most common types of propulsion for Navy ships have historically been propeller and water jet solutions. Today, we see a growing interest for rotatable thrusters when it comes to propulsion for governmental vessels, a trend following the commercial shipbuilding industry. Let me start to talk with, uh, about propeller and water jets. To the left, uh, you have controllable pitch propeller CPP. 
It is the backbone in Kongsberg propulsion solutions. The CPP technology is used for main propulsion with shaft line systems, but also used in several variants of Kongsberg thrusters. The main advantage with controllable pitch blades are a rapid thrust variation between a head and a stern thrust without change of rotation speed. This makes DP operation possible with the electric generations, generators coupled to main shaft, often used in commercial applications. It gives also short crash stop distance, maybe more of value for Navy vessels. Feathering possibility, allowing the blades to pitch to a low drag position and suitable for ships with multiple propellers is another advantage with the CPP. To the right, you have fixed build propeller and adjust adjustable bolted propeller. Generally, a high number of blades reduce vibration, but lead to lower efficiency. Most commercial vessels use four blades, while naval typically use five propeller blades. Nickel aluminium bronze material is our standard. Stainless steel is an option often used for ice classed vessel and icebreakers. Blade change underwater is an option used in some applications. Example is aircraft carrier where dry dock capability is limited. The outside of the hub can have a streamlined shape for high speed and low noise applications. Shaft line design and calculations are part of all propeller deliveries. And for Navy application with shock requirements, this is an important and interactive process with ship designer. Kongsberg Maritime have all necessary tools to provide this service. For Vortiet, we celebrate a 40 year anniversary this year. Kameva Vortiet is a wide range of Vortiet products and sizes. This means that we can match any customer need. Kongsberg Maritime is unique as a supplier of marine propulsion equipment with its in-house capability to develop propulsors. This includes verified performance using combination of CFD and testing in cavitation tunnels. The free surface cavitation tunnel at Hydrodynamic Research Center enables a unique test procedure for water jet systems. Well, the whole unit, inlet, pump, and steering and reversing unit is tested under cavitating conditions. Kongsberg Maritime has most silent products available for water at market regarding underwater radiated noise. We have standardized and tested impeller pitches available to achieve performance optimized installation and get the perfect match of gear ratios. The Kongsberg water jet propulsion provides extremely good maneuverability with low efficiency loss and even at full steering angles. The result is higher average speed, fuel savings, and safer operations. Kongsberg Maritime is the only water jet maker who is capable of performing inlet duct geometry optimization for each project. This has been our standard procedure for steel, steel series and part of our scope for many years. Kongsberg Maritime offers a wide range of rotatable thrusters for propulsion. Mechanical ones, electrical ones, hybrid, pulling or pushing with or without nozzles. We have contra-rotating propellers and retractable units. To the left, you can see a combined propeller and thruster solution for the Finnish border guard vessel Turva. To the right, an illustration of US thrusters in use for tugboat assisting Navy ships. 
Contact Kongsberg if you investigate thruster propulsion. We have products for many applications already. And if you're investing in innovative solutions with combined propulsion products, we have products and tools to develop your concepts further. The latest propulsion thruster developed by Kongsberg is the Elegance pod system. The thruster unit available both in pulling and pushing variants include a permanent electric motor integrated with a propeller shaft. The electrical motor is fed through a 690 voltage converter system. Six sizes cover power range from one and a half to seven and a half megawatt and the pods are available in ice classed variants. And the water mounting is offered as an optional function. Elegance pod propulsion system, including converter, switchboard and electric power generation, makes the ship design layout more flexible compared to traditional diesel mechanical arrangements. A flexible location of power generation is there already with full electric propulsion. You move the electrical motor to an outboard position, you increase even more available space or board when the shaft line and gears are removed from the vessel. And to conclude the propulsion section, will I mention the unique asset Kongsberg have in its hydrodynamic research center. In the center works dedicated engineers with hydrodynamic development, CFD calculation, propeller blade design and propulsion system design. One example is the Pruma system, where design of propeller and rudder is integrated into a fuel efficient system. The Pruma is available both for new sales and upgrading. Uh, and for upgrading, you, we see a potential to save 10 to 15% fuel when you combine with reduced chip speed and blade redesign. The Hydrodynamic Research Center have unique capabilities and tools in areas of CFD scale model testing and full scale observation. Please contact Kongsberg Maritime for a full presentation of the Kongsberg Hydrodynamic Research Center and its capability. So with this slide, will I start the deck machinery and motion control part? Uh, commercial stabilizers are available in three variants. The Gemini for smaller vessels with high performance and low cost. Non, it's of a non-retractable type. Neptune is used for larger vessels, retractable into a recess in the hull, flush with the vessel's side when not in use. And Aquarius is smaller vessels, a compact design with minimum size, weight and number of parts. Kongsberg Maritime offers also a large portfolio of commercial steering gears and rudders for naval, coast guard and governmental vessels. For more demanding applications, can we offer naval equipment designed to satisfy standard for shock, noise, vibration and electromagnetic signature. This picture illustrates Kongsberg's naval steering gear and naval stabilizers and some UK Royal Navy references. The deck machinery motion control section illustrates well that many Kongsberg products are available for cost effective use in Navy and Coast Guard application when commercial specification meets requirements. To the left in the picture, we can see examples of anchor, mooring and towing equipment available in Kongsberg product range. To the right, we have launch, launch and recovery system. Extensive development have been spent last decade to improve launch and recovery system and make them man safe and man free. Today, this technology area attracts a lot of attention in Navy design worldwide. 
following increased interest for autonomous vessels. Kongsberg Maritime developed launch and recovery system for challenging offshore and naval applications. This final section will address a more naval bespoke application, replenishment at sea. And by that we mean moving solid goods and or liquids from one vessel to another during transit speed. A beam replenishment from side to side of the vessels. To the left you have Rosal liquids, different probe types and liquids based on NATO standard can be vessel fuel, aviation fuel, water, urea, depending on specification. To the right, uh, ROS S solids, also based on NATO standards, two ton or heavy six ton modules. Important to mention already here is the all electric drive of equipment. Movable high points is used on the receiving ship. There are built in variants to reduce radar signature and foldable one for carriers. Movable high point eliminates the requirement for a cargo drop real traveler and it allows also back replenishment. Uh, to the right you can see a stern delivery and it's used for liquid replenishment and can be used at heavy sea state. The benefits of all electric RAS is immediate operational readiness. That means no need for hydraulic startup process. Low through life maintenance, high reliability, ease integration and installation or other factors. Safety focus and low environmental impact when hydraulic system and oils are removed is another main benefit. Finally, can Kongsberg supply power storage system to manage regenerated power from the ROS system. If you want to know more about replenishment at sea, please follow the YouTube link and material Kongsberg webpage or contact our dedicated sales team for a full presentation. Some words around Kongsberg service and support organization. The organization is set up for 24-7 support on all products. We handle around 70,000 phone calls during the year, 24,000 service appointments, 850 planned dockings and 1,000 upgrading projects. For Naval is integrated logistics support important and I will speak a little about that in next slide. ILS is mainly requested by our naval customers. Information is needed for complete scope of delivery. And Kongsberg uh, Maritime needs to collect and analyze information from subsystems. This work can start when we have a finalized design. Different customer meet, means very different requirements. It's important to understand the full ILS requirement to be able to include it in the quotation. Therefore, Kongsberg asks for clarification when needed. And um, we ask for templates when needed. And we find and understand requirements in reference standards when that is applicable. Kongsberg use a maintenance planning database to be able to customize the ILS work, but still learn from previous ILS deliveries. And the experience is that the more precise customer expressed ILS scope, the, the better we can respond to, to that. With this, Contact slide, his presentation part ended and I want to thank all of you for listening. Now we open up for Q&A section. Questions will be answered in best possible way. Uh, to my help, I have assistance by my colleague, Richard Mills, his vice president, marine robotic sales, Kongsberg Maritime. 
Richard was holding the webinar in April this year talking about Hugin Superior. And that presentation together with a number of other Kongsberg presentations for products and solutions can be found in the Kongsberg YouTube channel. So let's see what we have for question. Thank you, first of all, for the presentation. Yeah. About Hugin, do you see just wireless underwater communication mod modem or do you also control it on the surface of the sea? I think that's a question for Richard. It is indeed. Thanks, Patrick. And hello, everybody. Uh, and thank you for listening to, uh, to Patrick's webinar this morning. That's a good question about uh, using communication with AUVs. So our AUVs have an A in the name, meaning autonomous, and they do actually work in an autonomous way. So the operator loads a mission plan onto the vehicle, launches the vehicle, and lets it go and do its thing. However, during the mission, you might want to update the position or you might want to get some feedback from the vehicle. So we use a HiPAP acoustic communications and positioning system. So the HiPAP is either a USBL or an SSBL system uh, with ranges up to about six or 7,000 meters. And occasionally on the low frequency option, we can go a bit further than that. Uh, and through that, we have bi-directional communication to the vehicle. So we get position updates. We get telemetry back from the vehicle, so what it's doing, where it is, what the status of things like the batteries are, and also we get a little bit of real-time data back from the vehicle, just for quality control purposes. In defense applications, it wouldn't be very common to do that. It would normally be that the operators would launch the vehicle, give it a position update when it's at operating depth, and then just let it go. When the vehicle's on the surface, particularly during recovery, then yes, we do have uh, a radio network and a Wi-Fi network where we can communicate directly with the vehicle. So we can control it on the surface. But bear in mind, an AUV isn't designed to be particularly maneuverable when it's on the surface. So the amount of physical control on the vehicle is a little bit limited, but it's enough to steer it into a safe environment. So that's how we do, uh, do communications with our AUV products. Thanks, Patrick. Okay, then we have another question. How do you launch and recover the USV from a ship? There are different variants of that. Um, um, you can do it uh, from the stern or from the side of the, of the vessel. It can be assisted with um, a, a manual approach, but a lot of design work has been the last year to fully um, make uh, automatic uh, launches. And in most cases, uh, we have some kind of basket, basket which collect um, the, the vessel. Um, for um, units under the surface, uh, there is a newly developed technology where you lower uh, the receiving part to avoid the um, wave making zone uh, on the surface. So there are several uh, technical solutions depending on if it's uh, surface going or subsurface going uh, equipment. Next question is what is the air ejection system? The air ejection system is a um, um, system where you um, uh, send out air in the propeller blade uh, to reduce um, the um, hydroacoustic noise signature. That technology is limited to export control and is not available in the, in the global uh, maritime industry. We have a question around the design differences between XF5 and CPA among the CPP models, what is the track record of CPA, US Navy and or International Navy? The CPA is a modern, uh, modern variant of the CP hub and it's primarily um, used in um, uh, global navies. Uh, have Kongsberg supplied 
automation system for naval ship? What is your plan for adopting autonomous technology for surface combatant? Um, there, there is a further need for um, uh, development um, to have automation system available for all naval ships. Um, today, there is a very, very limited and narrow scope. Um, yeah, I think that is what I can answer there. Uh, I would like to know the reference of ABP on naval combatant ship. The ABP is adjustable bolted propeller and uh, it is mainly used in the Royal Navy uh, fleet, uh, Type 45 aircraft carrier. Uh, is the real-time data available in the cloud or there are use cases for applying ML and digital twins? Um, I, I think that refers to real-time data from um, the Hugin system. Richard, do you have any information about how we work with the cloud and transmission of information? Certainly. So we uh, we can use something we call Ocean Insight, which is a, a cloud-based data distribution service from uh, Kongsberg Maritime, built on the Cognify platform by Kongsberg Digital. Uh, and it, it's a, a tool available to us for not only cloud distribution, but data storage and data processing. Uh, that said, in defense applications, that would be unusual. The vast majority of the data is, is quite sensitive, particularly in uh, missions such as mine countermeasures or, or ASW. Uh, the question also included an element of ML, machine learning. Uh, and yes, we do use some machine learning style type algorithms on board the vehicles. Uh, for example, when we run a, a mine countermeasures survey on a Huguen AUV equipped with our HiSAS synthetic aperture sonar, we'll process the sonar imagery on board the vehicle in near real time. Overlaid on top of that is a series of uh, machine learning algorithms that we call SITAR. It's our target recognition uh, software. Uh, and that measures uh, detected objects against a library of onboard uh, targets to determine mine-like objects. We then feed that back into the guidance system so the vehicle can then go back and photograph them. So you have a single mission for detection, classification, and identification. And that's about the state of the art for using onboard machine learning. Machine learning is also used off-board post-mission for data analysis, seabed classification, and more in-depth uh, processing of sonar data quite extensively. Okay, let's see if we can take the three last questions as well. What's the operating limit for the USV launch and recovery? Uh, limit in sea state condition. It depends uh, a little about the size of the of the mothership and how uh, stable and good uh, that vessel is. Uh, communication links. I understand it is not operational on the surface, and it updates itself regarding to mission by the help of UFH link. Do you have secure encrypted radio link against jammer threats? Also, you have GPS on the system I can see on the data sheet. Does it protect against jamming threats? Richard, can you say something around that? Indeed, yes. So we do, we do have encryption on the vehicles, both for communication and for data storage on the vehicle um, to make sure everything is secure. The challenge with, uh, with GPS, we have a range of GPS antennas and receivers uh, available to this, the, the vehicle, depending on uh, the, the customer requirements. Uh, but what I will say is, uh, whilst you can get anti-jamming GPSs, anti-spoofing GPSs, a little more difficult to manage. Um, so 
reliability of GPS or in a GPS denied environment, we might then require some other external input to give it its initial position update. Of course, once the vehicle is beneath the water, GPS isn't irrelevant. Um, we use uh, an inertial measurement unit on board along with uh, a lot of other aiding from onboard sensors. And the last question is, does Kongsberg use CODAD combined diesel and diesel propulsion also for Navy ships? And I would say we are um, open and available to um, uh, look on all uh, different propulsion solutions. So with that, I once again thank you for listening to this and uh, there were a number of good questions as well. I think uh, we have passed the time we set for this um, webinar and uh, so thank you everyone for listening. <laughs>